When someone says a player has a 5 war, that idea sounds simple enough, right? From that information, you could assume that this player has contributed 5 additional wins to their team, based on their production. But what are those 5 wins compared to? And where does that come from? On the surface, war does sound simple. One number to rule them all. But here's the thing. Although that output can be pretty easy to understand, the calculation behind war isn't as simple as it looks. Different versions exist. They calculate things differently. In surprise, they don't always agree. In this video, we're breaking down what war really measures, the difference between F-war, B-war, and warp, and everything that goes into the calculation. War stands for wins above replacement. It tries to answer one simple but powerful question. If this player got hurt tomorrow and his team replaced him with a random AAA call-up or someone who's been warming the bench, how many wins would they lose? In other words, how much better is a player than a freely or cheaply available replacement? War includes everything that a player does. Offense is hitting and base running, defense, fielding and positional adjustments, playing time. The more games you contribute to, the better. And for pitchers, it measures value through a combination of their results, like ERA and FIP, and skills, like strikeouts, walks, and home run rates. It's the best all-in-one stat we have, but how can we apply it? Before we talk about how much war is good, we need to talk about what this replacement level is. A replacement level player is someone you can grab from AAA, off the waiver wire, or from free agency at basically no cost. Think the league minimum MLB contract. They're below average major leaguers. You can think a fourth outfielder, emergency starting pitcher, or a backup catcher. In war, players aren't compared to average major league players because an average major league player is not going to be cheap or free. The average salary of a big leaguer is 4.9 million, and the league minimum is 740,000. That's a big gap. So when you are comparing a player's war, they're being compared to that replacement level player, because that's the realistic fallback option if a star gets hurt. This is why even an average MLB player can have a war around two to two and a half in a season. Being average in the MLB is actually really valuable. So that leads us to the war scale. Here's a rough guide on how to read war values for position players. Zero or below, replacement level or worse. Yes, war can be negative. One to two is going to be a solid bench or part-time player. Two to three war is an average everyday starter. Three to five is going to be good to an all-star level player. Five to seven is going to be a superstar season. And eight and above are MVP candidates. If you think back to Aaron Judge's 2022 campaign, he posted around an 11 war. That's one of the best seasons in the modern era. And a typical all-star might land around four to five war. So when someone posts a five war, they aren't just good, they're borderline elite, which we equate to helping their team win five additional games compared to that replacement level player we talked about earlier. The different versions of war. The other confusing thing about war is that there are multiple versions of it. Depending on the website you go to, you will find slightly different variations of war, all calculated differently. The three most popular versions include Fangraph's F-War, Baseball References B-War, and Baseball Prospectus Warp. They're all war, but they're not identical. Each is calculated slightly differently, but they all spit out one number and are posted on a similar scale, but how they got to that final number is slightly different. Starting with F-War. Their offensive numbers are based around weighted runs created plus. Pitching is evaluated using FIP, focusing on what a pitcher controls from strikeouts, walks to home runs, and their defense is measured mostly by UZR, ultimate zone rating. B-War on baseball reference has its offensive numbers based on runs created and adjusted by park factors. Pitching is based on ERA with some adjustments, not just FIP, and defense is evaluating using defensive runs saved. Finally, we have Warp from Baseball Prospectus. They use a combination of stats that are calculated in-house. This includes things like batting runs above replacement, fielding runs above replacement, and pitching runs above replacement. This calculation, more than the other two, attempts to adjust even further for context, opponent strength, and more detailed defensive metrics. The result of these three war calculations is that a single player may have a 5.4 F-War, a 4.8 B-War, and a 5.1 Warp in the same season. Which, it isn't wrong, it just showcases how each site has different philosophies about what things are valuable. So let's break it down a little bit further. 
As we opened with, war is a combination of a player's entire game culminated together. Across all calculations, the key components typically include some variation of these stats. Batting runs. This is going to be an offensive metric based on hitting stats like singles, doubles, homers, walks, and strikeouts. It converts raw hitting into runs contributed above average. Base running runs. This includes stolen bases, taking extra bases on hits, and avoiding double plays. Base dealers like Trey Turner or Corbin Carroll add extra value here. Fielding runs. Based on how many runs a player saves or costs their teams defensively, using systems like DRS or UZR. Players at premium defensive positions, shortstop, center field, or catcher, also get bonus value, which leads us into positional adjustment. Not all positions are created equal. A shortstop or center fielder is credited extra because their job is tougher than a first baseman or left fielder. For example, even if two players hit identically, the shortstop's war will be higher. Finally, there's the replacement level bonus. War includes a small boost to account for playing better than a generic replacement player. That's why playing time matters. A full season is more valuable than a half season, even with identical stats. Some variation of these calculations all add up to give a total war figure, giving you a snapshot of that total player, the value that he brings from offense, defense, base running, and availability. Once you understand what war measures, you unlock another huge piece of baseball's modern economy, dollars per war. Front offices now routinely estimate how much one war is worth on an open market. Historically, the going rate has been around 8 to 9 million per war in free agency. Some years, it trends slightly higher or lower depending on the market. So when a team signs a player, they may do something like this. This player is projected 3 war next year. So if 1 war equals 9 million dollars, that makes him worth about 27 million. If they can sign him for less, it's a good deal. If they overpay, they'd better be buying into future upside fan engagement or some sort of leadership. Let's look at another example. Let's say a team signs a veteran shortstop. His projected war is 2.5 war next season. The market rate is 9 million per war. So the expected value would be 2.5 war multiplied by 9 million equaling 22.5 million. If the team signs him for a two year $30 million contract, they're paying roughly fair market value. If they sign him for two years at 18 million, they might have found a good bargain. The other thing that teams must consider is how adding a player with a certain war affects the outcome of that team season. Paying hundreds of millions for a superstar with a 10 war makes sense for a team who is already in contention for a postseason run. It also makes sense for a team who is on the bubble to make a splash in free agency with a high caliber player because it may help them get over the hump to get into the postseason. But this signing wouldn't make sense for a team that won only 40 games last season because winning 50 games in this next season doesn't bring any sort of return on that investment. This of course is an oversimplification of the ideas that front offices discuss each offseason, but this is how war can be applied for player acquisition in the front office level. Why does this all matter? Well, teams aren't just paying players for past performance anymore, they're paying for future war projections. War is literally baked into every major league contract negotiation, free agent signing, and trade evaluation. Whether it's one of the ones we've talked about today, or one that's calculated in-house. It's not just a stat for fans, it's a business tool for modern front offices. War is an amazing tool, because it bundles offense, defense, and base running into one number. It allows fans to compare players across eras and different positions, and it helps highlight players who might be underrated based on traditional stats. But war isn't flawless. The different sources equaling different numbers can be confusing. Defensive metrics also have some volatility, Context matters. War doesn't always capture leadership, clutch performance, or game calling for catchers. In short season skew results, war stabilized best over a full season, not a small sample size. So the bottom line is war is a great starting point, but not the whole story. Use it wisely, and you'll sound smarter than 90% of baseball fans out there. If you love diving into what makes players great beyond the box score, check out PitchLogic, the smart baseball that gives real-time feedback on velocity, spin rate, and more. Whether you're a pitcher, coach, or just someone who's into the stats, PitchLogic brings advanced player data right to your phone. Use code SIMPLE for $25 off at checkout. And hey, if you'd like to support Simple Saber Metric, check out our new merch. You can find it out on our website or in the store tab right here on the channel. Every purchase helps us bring you more deep dives into baseball stats and analytics. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, check out our other videos on StatCast metrics, defensive run saves, and pitch framing. 
Those videos will help you sharpen your baseball brain even further. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week on Simple Sabermetrics.